Welcome in to another Civilization VI review video here on the Badish Boost YouTube channel. I'm very excited about this particular review. We are reviewing what I think is probably, and I think most of you will agree with me, one of the most fun civilizations to play. We're going to go through Indonesia, Jitarja, and the power of the Indonesian Empire in Civilization, and as an added bonus, this particular game that I was playing, this is a YouTube exclusive, so this was not a game I played on Twitch, this is a game I played off stream uh, with my good friend Icarus, uh, who many of you would know uh, if you are joining us uh, for Twitch streams, and we played uh, a game where we made a, a gentleman's agreement to go for respective victory types based on our cultures, on the civilizations we picked, so I was playing Indonesia, going for a culture victory, he was playing Russia and going for a space race, a science victory. And so we both just went for our respective conditions um, and tried to get there the fastest. Now, I will preface this game with another unique part about this review is this is a loss for me. Um, Icarus is a fantastic Civ player. Icarus uh, beat me in the space race. And there are a couple key things that I want to actually dissect about this game. And you'll see some pretty ridiculous numbers that are about to come up on screen when we open up the game. And we'll dissect a couple things about culture victories that I learned along the way throughout this game. Talk a little bit about the complete OP power that is Russia in Civilization VI. Uh, but mostly, we'll talk about Indonesia and how absolutely fun Indonesia is to play. Let's get into the gameplay. All right. Here we are in Civilization VI looking at... My beautiful Indonesian Empire. I was very proud of this game. I, I, as I go, every time I go into one of these to do a review, I look at it and I'm like, oh, like why? Why are there no? Why is the? Why is this sheep not sheeped? What? Ha what happened here? I don't. I don't know. I, I'm not sure. The sheep are gone for some reason. Why? Why did I not put lumber mills on these rainforests? I don't know. At some point, apparently, look, Kampongs took over, and I just was like, you know what? We're Kamponging. There is nothing else. There is only Kampongs, you know? Uh, so, let's take a look at this game. This game was a ton of fun to play. I really enjoy this civilization. You will quickly notice, actually, every single city name in this game is actually in Jawaese from Star Wars. It is in the language of the Jawa, and that is because when I settled my capital, this sea became known as the Jawa Sea. That's just an automatic populated thing. And I was like, look, if we're next to the Jawa Sea, our capital is going to be named Utini. And there's no stopping it. And so actually every single city name you see in my empire is actually Jawa, direct translated. Uh, so if you want to put any of these into like a Star Wars translator, like you can actually find out what all of these cities are called. They actually do all make sense based on the city. They're specifically named. So there is an uh, uh, like an extra there's some uh, like extra bonus content if you as we're going through note all the city names you can search them and you can find out what all these cities actually mean in Jawa actually that's like you could literally do it okay that aside you will quickly notice uh, that almost all of our cities are coastal we do have a couple of non coastal settles why well like Repo was right here and then this was this was just kind of a necessary settle inland uh, just to get. Uh, again, access to Repa. We were taking advantage of Repa on kind of multiple fronts, uh, and so we wanted to do that and just set a border with what once was Germany. Germany did a foolish thing, and that foolish thing that Germany did is they, I believe, they stole a wonder from Icarus. And if you know anything about playing Civ with Icarus, uh, if you steal a wonder from Icarus, uh, that's not, it's not a good plan. It's not a good plan. So, uh, they're no more. At the very end of the game, uh, Icarus took all of their land, uh, but just so you can see the full map, uh, this is where uh, Tom Reese was. Icarus started over here on this continent up in the tundra. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Uh, we also have uh, Shaka up here on his own continent. We're playing small continents, I believe. Uh, Jay was down here. Uh, the unfortunate... Uh, this was actually Aztec, I believe, uh, at that one point. Montezuma was here. Uh, but unfortunately, Zhongs are very powerful, and he settled every one of his cities except for one on the coast. So that was a problem for him. Let me walk you through a couple kind of key things about uh, Indonesia and then specifically about this game. So let's pop open Jitarja first and look at what we're what we're working with with Jitarja. Well, let's talk. We'll talk about these one by one, kind of work our way through. Exalted Goddess of the Three Worlds is the first ability for Indonesia. Naval units can be purchased with faith. That's that's the only sieve 
that can do this. Okay, so naval units can be purchased with faith. Religious units pay no movement to embark or disembark. This fact alone, the religious units may, may pay no movement to embark or disembark, makes Jatarja and Indonesia an incredibly powerful religious sieve. I did not go for a religious victory in this particular game, but that ability to be able to get on and off uh, the, it, into continents, onto islands, to do different things, it's, it's pretty potent, actually. If you combo that with a couple other movement promotions or movement abilities uh, that you can get through your religion uh, for your apostles and missionaries, you could get your faith out there very quickly because they'll be able to cover a ton of land and now there's no movement penalty to embark or disembark either with Indonesia, so very potent religious ability uh, for if you're going for a religious win with Jatarja as well. Plus two faith to city centers that are adjacent to coast or lake tiles. So uh, you could quickly see if you jump into our game, uh, there's a lot of coastal settles. Coast, 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 coast. We came down onto this little extra island. Uh, we put three coastal cities in here. We even built Petra just for the fun of it, you know? Throw a Petra down. Look at this beautiful little... I don't even know what we're doing here. Why? Because it's coast. Uh, we just put coastal cities everywhere because that plus two faith is huge. Now, what that plus two faith right at the get-go, right? Plus two faith for city centers that are settled on coast or lake tile. That the most important part of this, right? It, that, that builds up over time, right? You're getting faith generation over the course of the game. But this plus two faith, what it really comes in handy for is if you look at my religion, we got religious settlements. Jitarja is hard-pressed. Indonesia is almost always going to get religious settlements when they're being played in a game. That plus two faith, you're going to most likely get the first pantheon, as long as you settle on, on coast or lake, right? So you gotta be coast or lake. But you're almost always gonna get it. And so you're gonna get that free settler, right? Because uh, you're almost always gonna take that one, right? Now, there are definitely other... There are other pantheons that are very, very good for Jatarja. Uh, God of the Seas, obviously very, very good for Jatarja as well. Uh, but when you hit religious settlements first, eh, it's difficult to pass up that settler, right? When you're when you're not playing like Better Bounce game or something like that, right? Um, you'll notice the rest of my religion is as follows. I took reliquaries. Relics have triple yield uh, on faith and tourism. And I did actually have a relic very early on in the game, which is one of the reasons why I ended up taking that. Uh, World Church for extra culture. We took the stupa because that's kind of what was left. Gives us the amenity as well. So amenities, I don't know, amenities are always nice, right? And then we ended up taking scripture towards the end uh, just because we actually didn't focus religion too hard in this game. I kind I think I might have taken like even like probably one of the last religions. I can't remember. I didn't actually focus on getting my religion necessarily uh, quickly. We obviously got Pantheon very fast. Uh, but I wasn't too concerned after we had gotten, you know, we got reliquaries, and so that was helpful. Um, and so, the that plus two faith that you get at the beginning is particularly important for getting that first pantheon and getting yourself off and running with faith. So, very nice way to start the game. The next thing that the Charger has, that Indonesia has, is the Great Nusantara. Uh, coast and lake tiles provide a minor adjacency bonus for Holy Site Campus industrial zone and theater square districts holy site campus industrial zone and theater square that's most of them uh that is most of them right it's not the commercial hub uh which is probably for balance issues uh because you'd get your bonuses on like a river mouth oh my gosh would be huge right uh but you get bonuses on pretty much everything uh minor adjacency from coast and lake so that's nice so little nooks get you that nice i mean it just it's really it's a really nice ability Plus one amenity from entertainment to each entertainment complex adjacent to coast or lake. So that's just uh, ad adjacent, right? Not like a, an adjacency bonus. So anyway, you could get some really nice, some really nice discs. So you'll notice we've got a lot of districts plastered here against the coastline, right? Uh, we're putting our districts along the coast because it's getting them that adjacency bonus. And so you get some really nice uh, placements along your coast. You just start building districts around it. It just starts starts to really beef up your districts and allows you to continue those coastal settles for the plus two faith, allows you to get adjacency from those coastlines. And why do you want to be on the coast? Well, you want to be on the coast because we're going to skip down now to the Kampung, the special build that the Indonesia has access to. Plus one production and plus one housing. That in and of itself is because you're th these are built on Co uh, on water tiles like in uh they have to be what coastal tiles right not deep water but coastal water 
the they're, they, those tiles are inherently not great unless you have like God of the Sea, but that's even just on fishing, right? So it's very difficult to boost these tiles unless you build like Mausoleum or something like that, which of course we did. But you all of a sudden have the ability to make those tiles incredibly productive and they give housing, which allows your cities to expand. And you get food for adjacent fishing boats. Now they have to be built next to a sea resource, so that limits your placement, but it really only limits it a little bit, especially if you've got a, a, a good enough placement and, and high resources on. So plus one production, plus one housing, plus one food per adjacent fishing boat, and then you get additional production, housing, and tourism, and the tourism is pretty a big bonus from the Kampong as the game goes on. So why are we settling coast? because everything about Indonesia screams coast. Plus two faith to city centers on coast, minor adjacency bonuses to districts on coast, and we're building kampongs anywhere we possibly can. So as long as there is a sea resource, we're building a kampong next to it, right? Uh, so that is that like rule of thumb. Sea resource, build a kampong next to it. Uh, better yet, put the fishing boats in because then your kampongs are going to get extra food, right? So this one in particular is a beautiful tile. And now we're also boosting that with Moz, right? So we've got Mausoleum boosting our, our water tiles in this particular city. But look at this tile. Look at this kampong. Plus one faith, plus one science, four food, one culture, two production, and a gold. Out of a tile that literally would have been, what, just what one food? Like, right? Or, or one food, one production. I can't even remember what a coastal tile is. One food, one gold, right? Or something like that. Like, that's all it would have been. And instead, it's it's a huge tile, and it's producing tourism. How much tourism? I don't know, but it's producing uh, visiting tourists one lifetime accumulation 168 tourism in this particular kampong, right? So all these kampongs are also generating tourism for your empire once you hit that flight, right? Flight in the, in the research tree. So kampongs everywhere, right? We put them everywhere we could. There's a kampong. Again, they have to be next to a sea resource. We also have fishing resources galore on this particular map. It was a really fun map to play. Uh, it, look, Icarus and I are, we jazz up our maps a little bit. Uh, this one was not uh, beefed up in wonders or anything like that. It was just, we just made sure like abundant resources were on and things. And we played, I think it was a small continents map. So a ton of fun. And we're just putting kampongs down everywhere. We never had housing problems. Uh, you know, we got 25 pop in our cap, and I wasn't even focused on building, you know, building people in, at, like, housing and, and food out of the cap. We just happened to do it, right? Um, we also had a couple other beautiful tiles uh, and things happen. Like, we've got our Chichen Itza, and so we've got some really nice-looking uh, rainforest tiles here as well. Uh, we've got another, like, big wonders here, uh, like the Great Bath, which has then caused us to be able to generate a bunch of faith on floods. Uh, so these tiles also look incredibly beautiful because of floods that have happened, right? I believe that's the that's the Great Bath that's doing that, because I'm like, why are there four faith on these tiles? I don't know why, except that the Great Bath probably has done that for us, right? Uh, we've got a preserve in here to boost up one of our national parks. It's looking really good. We've got another national park up here that actually includes part of Repa. So if you didn't know, you can actually national park Repa. Um, I, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't with these water-based wonders, uh, but that one you can. Um, so that was pretty cool to be able to do. We've got national parks kind of scattered around in different locations, um, trying to maximize, uh, obviously, our tourism. So... Now I'd like to get into the tourism aspect and how to pull off a culture victory. I want, we'll talk about Jongs here in just a second. Don't worry about it. Uh, but you will notice up here. I don't know what y'all typically generate as far as tourism is concerned in your games, but look at this number. 3,106 tourism. And you might say, wow, you're generating 3,106 tourism. You must have won a culture victory. Incorrect. Multiple times, I had the turn timer down to just a few turns, like less than 10. Uh, every time, I could not keep Icarus's from, from, from basically shunning that culture victory. And the reason for that is, I did not focus tourism early on in the game. I focused on culture, I had huge culture numbers, but I did not focus on putting in tourism buildings, things like getting your holy site in early. My holy site came very late. In fact, I think my first holy site was this one up here, uh, was this holy site. And it got, it came in very late because it was like a second, I think it was a second or third city settle, maybe second city. And it, I just, I didn't get my religion rolling for a while, but 
your 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 holy city, your holy your especially that initial holy site, right? If we look at our tourism, 20, 20 of our tourism and 3,900 lifetime accumulation of tourism here comes from that holy that holy site for in the original city that you put the the holy site in. That's an enormous amount. Um, I wish I could see uh, Icarus's numbers because I happen to know that his initial uh, Lavra, the, the, the holy site replacement for Russia, was insane because he you build it first. It's the first thing you put down. You get that in. I was not generating any tourism for so long that I had nothing to catch. His, his tourism had been building over the course of the whole game. Mine did not start until late game. Now, I'm generating a ludicrous amount of tourism late game. I actually took all of my gold and I started putting it towards buying every single great work in, in the game. I look look at this. Look at this. I have a hundred and two great works. I still couldn't win a culture victory. I have great works everywhere. We have reliquaries in and I have how many relics do I have? Look at the I, I wish I could just see how many relics I have specifically, but I have so many relics. I have all of them, and they're all gaining the reliquaries effect, which is, I mean, look at the numbers. 18 faith, 48 tourism from the Journal of Next Year's Dreams relic. I have bought all the relics. I have purchased everything. I have themed as much as I possibly could. Uh, wait, how do I go back to, I just turned that off. Look at this. Themed, 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 themed. I've worked on getting everything themed. I was generating as much as I could from great works. And I still couldn't do it. Uh, we're talking, again, 3,000 tourism per turn. But because I did not focus on early tourism buildings, right? I didn't get my holy site down early enough. I didn't build uh, early wonders. I was not involved in the early wonder conversation. I think I got great bath. I think that's it. I ended up putting some of those kind of mid-range wonders in. Uh, like Mont St. Michel, Mausoleum, right? We got some of those down, uh, Chichen Itza, but I didn't build a lot of those early game wonders, so they were also not generating that tourism for me. So it really wasn't until Flight that I really started to produce a level of tourism that started to, to benefit my, my win condition. So don't forget, when you're going for a culture victory, it says culture victory, but the win condition for a culture victory is tourism. And so you have to make sure you focus on tourism and things that will get you and net you tourists, um, not just culture. Culture obviously gets you down the path to enact those civics that will get you to being able to have tourism, but you need to make sure you get that early tourism in because I could not, even with this ludicrous number of, of tourism, I think even on the world, if we look at World Congress right now, active effects, yeah. Tourism from great works of this type is doubled, relics. I, we even, I, Icarus actually, I think even like gave this to me. He was like, yeah, you can have it because he kind of already knew that I was not going to be able to catch him before he won. I think, I think I, I, I scared him a little bit, but I don't think he was too worried. Uh, Icarus played a fantastic game of Civ. We even doubled relic tourism. Still could not do it. Uh, but look, it's number is huge. So anyway, remember focus culture. But also, you need a little bit of tourism. Generate some tourism early game. Don't wait until late game to start generating tourists uh, because it's very hard to catch up in that particular instance. Okay, let's talk about the last piece of Indonesia that I have not discussed yet, and then we'll do a quick kind of Russia talk. The Jong. Indonesian unique medieval era unit that replaces the frigate. Formation units uh, all inherit escort speed and plus five combat strength when in formation. So, uh, get them with a Great Admiral. You're going to get a lot of speed, uh, plus five combat strength when in formation. So put them together uh, in some sort of formation, triangulate them, diamond them, all of those things. And you end up with uh, a really fast, really powerful unit. Now, the kicker for the Zhang is that it unlocks much earlier than the frigate does, like a substantial amount earlier. And I can't remember where it unlocks right here uh, in mercenaries. That is not that far down the civics tree, and you could grab your Zhongs really quickly here in Mercenaries, uh, because the frigate is on the science side of things, and you don't unlock the frigate until probably, I think, into the Renaissance era, so you basically get your Zhongs, your frigate replacement, 
early, plus you get all those bonuses. Here is something to think about when you're also doing a Zhang rush, if you're going for that, right? Focus culture, get down that culture tree as fast as possible. There are two great admirals. I mean, all of them are pretty helpful. But as you're putting your, your harbors in and generating those points, Gaius Dulius is the great general in the classical era, so very early on, where you can actually take a unit and increase it to a fleet. That makes your Zhang incredibly powerful because now you have a fleet. Basically, before anyone has frigates, you have a fleet of your Zhangs, of frigates. It's That's insane. I was ripping through cities with that one Zhang because it got turned into a, it got turned into a fleet very early. The other one to think about is uh, Santa Cruz in the in the Renaissance era forms an armada out of a unit. So not only you can take one unit and make it an armada, which is also which is just, that's just incredibly powerful in and of itself, right? Um, but when you're you're in the Renaissance now, so now other people could probably be building frigates, but you're gonna you're gonna have a Zhang armada like right away. So pay attention to those two great admirals because increasing the unit is crazy. That first one is particularly Gaius Dulius. Getting that early fleet and, and using Zhongs for that, absolutely incredible. So the first thing that I did with my Zhongs when I got to them was one thing that happened that was pretty critical to me. Uh, Tom Reese over here, the Scythian Empire, had taken over Nan Modal. Now, Nan Modal, as you probably all know, when you are the envoy, uh, the suzerain of Nan Modal, your districts on coast or lake tiles provide plus two culture. Well. Districts providing plus two culture combined with the fact that I am building all of my districts on the coast anyway Because I'm getting that adjacency bonus from them. Nan Modal is probably the foremost best City-state for Indonesia out there And so I was Seuss of Nan Modal and then of course it ended up getting taken over It was relatively far away from my empire across the lake across the sea, right? I formed my Zhongs Got my Zhang rush going on. Freed Nan Modal. Uh, you have to don't forget Zhongs are a ranged unit, and so you also have to. I think I sent a caravel with them. Send a melee ship with them to the cities. Uh, so we we traveled across, discovered Bandar Brunei, freed Nan Modal. Which when you do that, by the way, that instantly grants you suzerainty. If you didn't know that, when you free a city state, uh, you get I think it's six envoys there. I'm not sure exactly how it works because I can't remember anymore. Uh, but I'm relatively certain that you automatically get uh, the, the the six envoys there. Like, you get automatic suzerainty. Uh, it might, might, might be three, I can't remember. Um, but you get suzerainty there when you free them. So we freed Nan Modal, and then I realized I had just ludicrously powerful Zhongs, and I got that great admiral, uh, and got one of them turned into a fleet. And poor Montezuma and the Aztec Empire had settled all of their cities on the coast, and so we took our Zhongs and basically without even trying, we took out all of the Aztec Empire. Their one city that was inland was the last one to fall because I had to actually get a unit in here to be able to deal with it. Uh, but you can see all of my Zhongs ended up here. We've got highly promoted Zhongs uh, sitting in, uh, this one is our was our, uh, our armada, uh, one that came in, but they're highly promoted. They're just sitting in all of the cities because that's where they ended up at the end of the war. Uh, but our Zhongs were very potent. For an extended period of time, Zhongs are a very, very potent thing to use. So we were able to take out uh, the entirety of the Aztec Empire, which, you know, gave us access to more land. And obviously the biggest thing for, for me playing Indonesia was it gave me access, because they were all coastal cities, to more Kampungs. And so we put Kampungs down in all of our cities to help generate more tourism. Like, look at, look at this right here. Look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Kampungs out here in the south. Like, it's just, it's so much fun to throw these guys down. Uh, obviously, it's, uh, the fishing boats here did not get put in, but if you put, if you put, wow, that's an uh, oversight and a half. I wonder if some sort of, something must have happened here where this got destroyed or something, because you put a fishing, you put a fishing boat here, food, 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 food. That's, like, that's, these tiles could all be so much better. Put a fishing boat right there. Hindsight, you know? Um, anyway, so you can see I took advantage of every opportunity to go settle coast, but we could not overcome what may be the most OP civilization in all of Civ 6, and that is Russia. So if we go over to the, uh, I want to go to the starting area actually for Russia. This is where Icarus started with Russia, 
And you'll notice right off the bat, number one, it's a Pytini start. Beautiful. I had a Repa start. All's fair when you both start on a Wonder. Um, so uh, the Pytini start, though, you'll, what you'll notice is this is a Pytini start where there are Tundra tiles that are included in the Pytini bonus. Look at this tile with a farm on it. Plus one faith, plus one science, six food, five culture, three production, six gold. It's in the Tundra, and so it is taking advantage of that plus one production, plus one faith that you get as Russia when you're in the Tundra. If you have tiles that are expandable uh, or, or buildable, like so like one, two, three, four. Are you kidding me with the deer? Look at these deer tiles. Any tile that has something on it to be uh, to be uh, uh, improved, right? Any improvable tile in the tundra when you are Russia becomes an absolute monster of a tile. You end up with just the most ludicrous looking tiles as Russia. Now, do they have the food production capability that Canada does? No. Canada has the edge in tundra on food production and growing bigger cities and things like that. But from a faith generation and production standpoint, Russia starts to make these tiles look incredibly lucrative because all of a sudden you've got that plus one production, plus one faith. That faith generation early on is going to be huge for you. And because you get your lavras in, when you end up with, on the religion screen, if we go to Icarusism, when you end up with Dance of the Aurora and you're playing as Russia, plus you plop in work ethic, that is like insta win. That is a, a instant win condition, almost, right? You still gotta play it right. You still gotta be you still gotta be good at the game, but the Dance of the Aurora as Russia comboed with work ethic to take advantage of the absolutely insane levels of uh faith that you're gonna be generating from your uh from your Lavras is just like this is I I can't see. Can we see? Yeah, this is a 14 faith, 14 production Lavra. And that was 14 faith, 14 production, so early on in the game. Also, it's under Niter. Oh my goodness. But anyway, needless to say, Russia is a very, very powerful civilization. Uh, Icarus got a little bit of early tourism out that I was not able to overcome because I did not focus tourism fast enough. And so uh, Russia, Russia and Icarus were able to get to space uh, before I was able to pull off the tourism win. It's a turn 233 victory, so we weren't like, we weren't playing like particularly like you know, min-maxing everything and really going for it. Uh, but you can see we had a lot of fun in this game. Uh, Icarus took over, a, I don't know how many cities Icarus has. It's completely ridiculous because he crossed the ocean and then took over all of Germany as well. I mean, he wanted this tundra, right? He had come up here and started and started settling all this tundra because that was kind of the next step for him was to get access to even more tundra tiles, uh, which again, you could quickly see uh, as you look at, you know, here, here are Mogadishu's tiles, right? One, one, one food, four production. Here are, here are the tiles in Russia's territory. One food, seven production, and a faith, right? Because they're following uh, Icarusism, and they, like the, the tiles are just, the, that difference is huge for Russia, sitting up there, uh, producing faith like crazy, producing production like crazy. Uh, it makes Russia a really interesting play um, in Civilization VI. Hopefully, you've been able to kind of ascertain that it is so much fun. It is so much fun to play uh, as Indonesia. I love the play style. It changes things up a little bit. It's not... Indonesia plays just uh, just differently enough from everybody else because of those coastal adjacency bonuses and a couple different things that you really end up kind of thinking differently about laying out your cities, which is fun. That's a really fun thing, especially for players who've been playing for a long time. I talked about this with the Gaul as well, with, with the Gaelic Empire. You think differently about city planning with them. And so that creates kind of a really fun dynamic. I think that Indonesia is very much the same. They're a lot of fun to play as uh, with the Jong Rush, with the Kampungs. Um, you've got a lot of uh, just interesting things you can do uh, with your district placements to be able to maximize those adjacency bonuses on the coast. Uh, it's just, it's a lot of fun. I kind of want to play Indonesia again, maybe go for a religious victory, see how quickly you can pull one of those off uh, with the amount of faith you can generate as well. Uh, there's just a lot, uh, so much fun that you could do with Indonesia. So hopefully you enjoyed this review video. If you have played Indonesia, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Jatarja and the power of Indonesia. Uh, do you prefer them as uh, as a culture victory civilization? Do you prefer them as a religious victory? Have you done both? Uh, and maybe, maybe what are your thoughts on Russia? Is Russia too good? Is Russia too good. Because we didn't even talk about the other bonuses that Russia has, right? We just talked about the Tundra bonus, that's all. Oh, but anyway, 
Thank you for watching the video. I greatly appreciate it. If you like the content, please feel free to hit that thumbs up button. Be sure you're subscribed to the channel so you know when I release my next video. Next week will be yet another Civilization VI video before we jump back into some humankind content. I'm very excited about it. Uh, next week, we talk about our population challenge game. Uh, we break down population and how to enhance it. We're going to go over our Kamai game. It is going to be a really interesting video. Um, so I look forward to seeing you for that. Thank you for watching this week's video, and I will see you next week.